now, let's join Ace Broadcaster Mamode Akuga as he takes us inside the Niger Delta. Hello out there and welcome to the program. It's Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Niger's oil rich region. I'm your regular host, Mamode Akuga. We begin today's package with a report on the people's reaction to the recent threat by the Supreme Egbesu Liberation Fighters to resume hostilities on account of the continued neglect and consequent underdevelopment of the Niger Delta region. Thereafter, we we'll bring you the position of Nigeria's former Minister of Housing and Urban Development, Chief Udoese Essien, on what should be the stake of oil producing communities in the Petroleum Industry Bill, PIB. Our next report focuses on the recent oversight visit to the NDDC in Port Harcourt by the Senate Committee on Niger Delta to access firsthand the NDDC's expenditure of 16 billion naira appropriated for the completion of the NDDC's corporate headquarters building. And our last report into this package captures the response of constituents to the constituency projects undertaken recently by Honorable Fred Agbedi, member representing Sagbama Ekerimo Federal Constituency in the House of Representatives. Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Nigeria's oil-rich region will be back in just a moment. Don't go away. Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, determined to make a difference. Welcome back. It's Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Nigeria's oil-rich region. Reactions have continued to trail last week's threat by the Supreme Egbesu Liberation Fighters, a militant group operating in the Niger Delta, to resume hostilities on account of the federal government's neglect of their region. While some respondents have urged the aggrieved militant group to sheath their sword and give peace a chance in the Niger Delta, Others have prevailed on the federal government to begin to address the structural causes of violence in the Niger Delta and other parts of the country. Correspondent Takana Miofuri tells us more. In a video released last week by Africa Independent Television, the Supreme Egbesu Liberation Fighters accused the federal government of neglecting the Niger Delta region despite its immense contributions to Nigeria's economic survival in the last six decades. Consequently, the group had threatened to resume hostilities in a coordinated destruction of critical infrastructure in Lagos and Abuja. Over the years, the Niger Delta people have made frantic efforts to create an enabling environment that can promote business activities and subsequently bring the desired development that the people has been yearning for and promote the living standard of the people. But to our greatest dismay, the Nigerian government over the years have decided to handle the issues of the Niger Delta region with kid gloves. They have betrayed the struggle and have left the people to their fate. The once fertile agricultural land and marine environment has been completely degraded with series of environmental pollution through the oil pollution that has been taking place. As a group determined to give total liberation of our people, we will destroy all the oil facilities both onshore and offshore. In no distance time, we will be seen to be crippling the Nigeria economy in no distance time as well. Obviously, the group's threat to make the Nigerian state ungovernable in furtherance of its agenda amounts to an act of terrorism. More worrisome is the fact that the recent threat to destabilize the polity comes at a time the federal government is battling with pockets of rebellious uprising across the country. According to Senate President Ahmed Lawan, the federal government was poised to deal decisively with all forms of threat to the stability and corporate existence of the country. You recall that the National Economic Council approved of uh, taking some funds from the excess crude accounts with a view to giving more resources to our armed forces. This is a commendable uh, uh, effort and we are ready to help with the appropriation to ensure that we buy those, uh, we acquire those uh, security 
uh, weapons or the, the, for the armed forces of this country to fight, uh, to end this insecurity in the northeast, in the northwest, in the south, east, south, south, and southwest as well. Since then, the federal government's decision to apply counterforce to checkmate acts of lawlessness in the Niger Delta has been generating mixed reactions from Nigerians. While some respondents insist that a militant group must give peace a chance in the Niger Delta, others are against the option of gunboat diplomacy to halt act of rebellion in the region. They would rather have the government address issues of social injustice Nigerians have had to contend with over the years. There's absolutely nothing conflict breeds. It destroys. It destroys. It forestalls any form of development. See how the region is. What have we benefited as a people? Can't we change the narrative from aggression to try to dialogue, try to see that we bring development to our region? And how can we achieve this? There's no need for the resumption of hostilities. The nation is going through a lot at this point in time. And all we need is some sense of, you know, some sense of responsibility. No good country would want to fight its citizen at all corners, in the north, in the south, in the east, at the middle belt. We're fighting everywhere, every day, killing. No good country can survive with that. So I encourage government to wake up from their slumber and look at a way to begin to match their wars with action. What Nigeria needs, Nigerians are not asking for heavens. What Nigeria is asking for is what they could do and how they could feed their family and live a good life, which ordinarily, every good leader in the country, the resources are there. They should deploy the resources to ensure that the people get good welfare. And all these things will just fizzle out. The Niger Delta region um, uh, uh, shows some of the highest unemployment rates in the country. And it's not supposed to be so. We are the region that produces the resources of the country, but there is unemployment, there is poverty, youths are, are, are dejected, they are, they are dis, dis, becoming dis, dis, disillusioned. And, and then, of course, the, the, the thing is that they could be employed by uh, mischievous people to carry out some criminal activities and we're praying that, that we shouldn't get to that point but it's, we're sitting with a time bomb that's the truth and the Nigerian government must listen uh, to, to us as we have been speaking and as um, highlighted by these young people in that video. After many years of agitation and armed struggle by militant groups in the Niger Delta the federal government broke out a peace deal with them in September 2009 and promised to transform their region. The peace process was truncated with renewed hostilities in the last quarter of 2015. Under the Buhari presidency, the federal government reopened talks with aggrieved armed groups through leaders of thought in the Niger Delta. At a meeting with Mr. President in November 2016, Niger Delta leaders had made a 16-point demand as a precondition for sustained peace in the region. Sadly, most of the demands made with a view to improving the lots of oil-producing communities in the Niger Delta have been left largely unaddressed by the federal government till date. The, the narrative would have changed, but unfortunately, out of the 16 items as we speak today, we, will, we, we have only two items as it were, one and a half attended to. That's the Maritime University of Korenkoko and then the Ogoni Cleanup. Um, the status is unclear to us now. But you see, the young people are running out of patience. Pandev, I repeat, completely agrees with the issues raised by the young people. But our concern is that the, 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 deploy, the deployment of violence in, in um, demonstrating our grievances is not the answer at this time. It's not the best um, strategy to employ. Uh, we, we know that the ramifications of that kind of action will be, will be felt more by our people. Our, our grandfathers, our grandmothers, our mothers, our daughters and our sisters in the villages, in the various communities of the Niger Delta. We, we have a situation where today, as the young people raised uh, in that video that is viral now, is, is that our, our communities have been militarized. This 16 point agenda was something that was agreed on and till now nothing has been done. When our boys went on their militancy, it was in revolt of neglect, justifiable neglect. And that neglect has not been addressed. So I am not surprised that our Igbesu boys are uh, clamoring for attention. You saw how flood devastated the Niger Delta under the pandemic. Was there any response from the federal government? You cannot be milking 
a cow and not feeding it. The Niger Delta needs to be fed. In furtherance of their demand for an existence in the Niger Delta, the Supreme Egbesu Freedom Fighters and other militant groups in the region are enjoined to continue to embrace dialogue rather than resort to violence resistance to perceived marginalization. The call is hinged on the premise that only dialogue can guarantee a win-win outcome for the federal government and agitating militants in a peace process that has lasted almost 12 years in the Niger Delta. Inside the Niger Delta. To give agitated oil producing communities a sense of belonging in the management and control of Nigeria's oil wealth, as well as Dow's tension in the region, one time representative of Eket Ona, Esireket, and Ibuno federal constituency in the House of Representatives, Chief Ndoese Essien has called for a review of the process of allocating oil blocks, which excludes Niger Deltans as major players in the petroleum industry. In an exclusive interview with Inside the Niger Delta, Chief Essien said the review should be made in the Petroleum Industry Bill PIB to ensure equitable participation of petroleum host and impacted communities in the petroleum industry. At the end of the war, succeeding military administrations decided to transfer the property and ownership of petroleum to individuals from non-oil producing parts of the country by allocating oil blocks to them. The oil blocks given to them was not because they were technically or financially more competent than people from the oil producing communities. But they just got it because the government in power was inclined or was their government. So they used the position of the government to allocate the oil blocks to themselves, almost to the exclusion of people from the oil producing communities. This has to be addressed. There has to be a review of the allocations given out. In the PIB, which is currently going through its final stage of amendment for passage into law, the former Minister of Lands and Housing and Urban Development charged National Assembly members to be more specific on what constitutes an oil-producing community. The PIB talks about host community without a clear definition of who the host community is. Is it the village? Is it the clan? Is it the local government area? Or is it the state? This has to be made explicit so that one knows. Because I know in some states where the entire state is not oil producing, some state governments have taken all the benefits of oil production to the entire state, thus again depriving the immediate oil producing community of their resources. Chief Ndoese also urged the federal government to stop appropriating gas flare penalty funds to itself and pay such funds directly to petroleum host and impacted communities that directly suffer the negative impacts of constant flaring of associated gas in the Niger Delta. Inside the Niger Delta. The Senate Committee on NDDC has expressed satisfaction with the NDDC over the judicial spending of the 16 billion naira appropriated for the completion of the Commission's corporate headquarters in Port Harcourt. The chairman of the committee, Senator Peter Mwabushi, gave the NDDC the pass mark after he led other members of the committee on an inspection of the building project as part of its oversight obligation to the Commission. Correspondent Chika Bodize has the report. The success story of the new NDDC corporate headquarters building project began shortly after it came under the supervision of Senator Godswill Akpabio, following his appointment in August 2019 as Minister of Niger Delta Affairs. Worried that the project that was first awarded by the defunct Oil Mineral Producing Areas Development Commission 
Umpadek, and reawarded several times by the NDDC was nowhere near completion, the Honorable Minister had made it a priority project to break the jinx of its non-completion in over 25 years. Through Akbabu's efforts, the new NDDC Corporate Headquarters Building Project has been completed with state-of-the-art facilities. After inspecting the project, the Senate Committee on Niger Delta was satisfied that the 16 billion naira appropriated for the completion of the project had been judiciously applied. This is my second visit to this headquarters. I came to with my colleagues on oversight and immediately we finished, we voted money and we said we want this headquarters to be completed. However, it was not. But today, we are happy to sit down in this headquarter of the Niger Data Development Commission. During its recent working visit to Portacot, the Senate Committee on Niger Delta noted that its quarrel with the NDDC bordering on project execution was over and gave credit to the Commission's interim administrator, Aqua Effiong, for extending an olive branch to the National Assembly members. This committee has no problem with anybody. But if in the course of our, of our site function we step on your toes, it is because it is our duty. And so what happened, happened in the course of our oversight function? And the sole administrator or the interim administrator has been so nice in terms of reach out, communication, and discussions. And he opened discussions with us and he told us he's ready to work for the people of the Niger Delta within the tenor he's going to be here. And that is why you see my distinguished colleagues, there is need for cooperation and there is need for Niger Delta to move forward. And that is why we are here today. In his response, the NDDC boss said the commission could no longer operate in isolation and had decided therefore to get critical stakeholders to buy into its project to make meaningful impact on the lives of oil producing communities in the Niger Delta. I want to thank the distinguished senators that have come. They have come, they have seen that the money they appropriated for the project is well utilized. Also want to thank the Honorable Minister for Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Gosfield Akwabi, who insisted that this project must be done so that we could stop the years of um, payment of huge rent and so on. He, when he came here, he decided to put in a whole lot of effort and energy and he calls uh, repeatedly that this project must be completed and today the project is completed. And in a short while, the project is due for commissioning. In addition to the revival of the abandoned East-West Road reconstruction and dualization project, the completed new corporate headquarters building project of the NDDC will go down in history as Senator Akbabio's legacy project as Minister of Niger Delta Affairs. To the relief of most Niger Deltans, the new corporate headquarters building project of the NDDC will be commissioned by President Muhammadu Buhari on the 11th of March 2021. Inside the Niger Delta Introducing from the heart of Nigeria's Niger Delta region, a residential estate like no other, Victoria Creek Gardens Estate, VCG2 Airport Road, Patakot River State. A blend of aesthetics, functionality and simplicity built into 600 units of safe and comfortable accommodation. Located in an urban serene environment, VCG2 Estate is just 5 minutes away from the Patakot International Airport. It features an already built police station, a shopping mall, hospital, hotel, cinema, club, gym, playground and many other facilities for your comfort. Purchase a home at our irresistible offer today for you and your family or just simply invest in our real estate for a fantastic return on investments. For more information, call us on 070-410-01558 or visit our office at Plot 14 Woji Road, GRA Phase 2, Patakot, Victoria Creek Gardens Estate, Oasis in the Garden. Heritage Bank. Service. Performance, respect, integrity, innovation.
tenacity, excellence. Heritage Bank, your timeless wealth partner. Azekiel Group, oil and gas, dredging, power and air transportation. Azekiel Group, petroleum product sufficiency, energy sustainability and infrastructure development. Beneficiaries of a one-day intensive training on fisheries and aquaculture organized recently in Sagbama by the lawmaker representing Sagbama Ikrimo Federal Constituency of Bayelsa State in partnership with the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development now have a cause to look forward to a brighter future. They unveiled their expectations at the end of the training session in Sagbama, headquarters of Sagbama Local Government Area of Bayelsa State, and promised to utilize knowledge gained from the Skills Acquisition Program to improve their lots. Correspondent Lovely Ofigo has more. Beneficiaries of the Skills Acquisition Program, all practicing fish farmers, drawn from different communities comprising Sagbama Ekerimo Federal Constituency, were exposed to techniques aimed at ensuring increased yields and sustainability in their businesses. At the end of the exercise, they were given fingerlings and fish feed to boost production and remain afloat in business. They will say they want to empower fish farmers. At the end of the day, they empower those that don't even have anything, uh, idea or mind about fish farming. At the end of the day, they will sell everything and scatter. But this one, I marvel that they gathered all fish farmers in Bayasa to tell us more things, to join the ones we have already known. We have been taught how to nurse fishes, how to open our own farms and to grow in the fishing industry. And we are very happy and we are glad. Fred Agbedi, we thank you so much. May God Almighty continue to give you more blessings and more grace to empower the youth and the people of Raja Delta. Other beneficiaries of the initiative who endorsed it as timely said they were particularly impressed with its non-partisan consideration with regards to participation. There's nothing like party affiliation. There's nothing like party that uh, you are from APC, you are from PDP, from what I see because I'm speaking from my own side of it, I am of APC, a state officer of APC. I was surprised when I received the text that I should come for training. Some of them are stuck somewhere. So this has just come timely. They are using this feed today. I know most of the beneficiaries are using the feed today. It's not something they will keep till another day. They will feed their uh, stock today. And some of them that are receiving juveniles and all that uh, packages for this program, they are, is going to turn things around. The training on fisheries and aquaculture is the second phase of an economic empowerment program designed and implemented by Honorable Fred Agbedi as part of his constituency project. For a state that has been consistently ranked among states with the highest unemployment rates in the country by the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, the intervention offers vistas of hope as it will lead to a reduction in the growing army of unemployed persons. The charge is for them to make sure that they utilize the opportunity to enhance themselves and get something out of it. To, 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 to advance their personal aspirations. We are getting things now from the center. You know, in the past, we always negated. But this time, we have a very strong member in the House of Reps. And indeed, we have the backing also of the Speaker of the House of Reps and the Federal Ministry. And they're all bringing this to us. But interestingly, they're also bringing it into a prosperity government. The, the whole process is just truly magnificent. This encouragement that I've gotten from the state government will also spur me to do more in empowerment to ensure that more and more people are empowered to also assist what the state government is doing. During the economic empowerment program, Honorable Agbede restated his commitment to the welfare of his constituents who are deserving of quality representation in the National Assembly. For my people in the federal constituency, I have always told them that whatever that is due them, whatever that I'm able to attract to them, will be turned into my federal constituency and of course this is another opportunity which the people have seen a number of these opportunities have been presented to my people and for those who are not participants today who didn't have the opportunity today other opportunities will come and they will also be beneficiaries in future 
The recent skills acquisition training on fisheries and aquaculture comes on the heels of an economic empowerment program organized earlier in Ekerimo, where motorcycles were donated to scores of beneficiaries to commence transportation business. Obviously, this initiative, courtesy of Honorable Fred Agbedi, was designed to create jobs for his constituents to reduce poverty in his federal constituency. Inside the Niger Delta. Well, that's how much we can take on the program for today. Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Nigeria's oil-rich region will be back same time, same station next week. Until then, you can follow us on our social media handles shown right now on your screen. Until next week, I am Mamode Akuga, thanking you for staying with us. Bye for now. Mm-hmm.